Hey everyone, welcome back to Tensor Titans. Today we are diving into an exciting and crucial project, credit card fraud detection using machine learning. Fraudulent transaction cost businesses billions of dollars each year and AI can help us fight back. We will build a powerful fraud detection model and a streamlit app to make predictions in real time. So make sure to watch till the end because we will train our model, evaluate it and even deploy it with a user-friendly interface. So before we see the workflow for our project, let me introduce you to the Light GVM. So Light GVM is a light gradient boosting machine. It is a high-performance gradient boosting framework that is optimized for speed and efficiency. Unlike traditional decision trees, Light GVM uses leaf-wise growth, which means it builds the most significant splits first, making it much faster and memory efficient. So now that you know that what is Light GVM, we will be using this as a model for our project. So now let's see what's going to be the workflow for our project. So first we will start by importing the credit card data. After importing the data, we will perform some data pre-processing over the data. After the data pre-processing, we will do some data analysis and after that we will split our data into the training and the testing set. Then on the training set, we will train our model and after training our model, we will evaluate on various matrices and then finally we will deploy our model so that the other users can use it online. So now let's jump into the coding part. So let me just quickly create and activate our environment for our project. Now let's just quickly install the libraries for our project. Let's close the terminal. Now we will create a new file app.ipynb. Let me just quickly import the essential libraries. So here we are using pandas and numpy for handling our data. Seaborn and matplotlib will help us to visualize it and scikit-learn provides tools for machine learning. We also use mod to balance the dataset and geopy to calculate the distance between the transactions locations. Now let's load our dataset. So df is equal to pd.treatcsv dataset.csv let me just quickly show you the dataset so df.head so this is the dataset for our project now we will first handle the transaction date transaction time column we will be extracting the hours days and month from this column so we will be using two date time function for the pre-processing of the transaction date transaction time column now let's drop the irrelevant features or the columns from our dataset so these are the features which are irrelevant and not required by our project. So we will be dropping these columns. So now this is the data set with the columns that we are using in our project. So now let's first handle the categorical columns in our data set. As merchant category and gender columns are the categorical columns. So we will be using label encoder to encode these columns into a numerical format. Now here we will create a function which will calculate the distance between the transaction location and the merchant location. As a sudden transaction happening far from a usual location can be a red flag. So we will be calculating the distance between them. We will create a separate feature for the distance between the transaction location and the merchant location. So as you can see over here that a separate feature distance is created in the data set. Now let's define the features which we will be using while training our model. So we will be using features merchant, category, amount, CC num, hour, days, month, gender and distance. We will be passing these features as an X variable for the model and for the Y variable we will be using the column is fraud. As our data set is highly unbalanced let me show you through a graph that how the number of fraudulent transactions are very less as compared to the legitimate transactions. So we will be using a count plot for plotting the number of fraudulent transactions and the legitimate transactions. So as you can see that the number of fraudulent transactions are very less compared to the legitimate transactions. So with the help of the SMART, we will balance our dataset. SMART is a synthetic minority oversampling technique. It helps us to balance our dataset by generating the synthetic fraud cases. So let me show you again through the count plot. As you can see over here that now our dataset is balanced. Number of fraudulent transactions and the number of legitimate transactions are almost equal. As our dataset is now balanced, let's split our dataset into the training and the testing split so that we can use the training set for the training of our model and testing set for the evaluation of our model. 
as the data set is now split into the training and the testing set let's train our model so we will be using lgbm classifier as our model for the project now let's specify the parameters for our project so we will be specifying boosting type as gbdt as it is the most common type it is a gradient boosting decision tree where trees are built sequentially to reduce residual errors then we will specify the objective as binary as this is a binary classification where two possible outcomes are there which is the fraudulent transaction or legitimate transaction then we will specify the matrix auc auc is a good matrix for imbalanced data set as it considered both sensitive and specificity then we will specify the learning rate as 0.05 which shows a gradual convergence reducing the risk of overfitting then we will specify the number of leaves in each decision tree which is 31 and then we keep the max depth as minus 1 minus 1 means that there is no limit on the depth allowing trees to grow as needed however we must monitor for overfitting then we will specify the n estimate is equal to 200 which specifies the number of trees and then finally we fit our model on the x train and the y train where x trains are the features and y trains are the label this step is essential as it allows the model to learn from training data to make future predictions. Now let's predict through our models. So y pred is equal to lgb model dot predict. We will pass the x test as parameter. Now we will evaluate our model through the classification report and the ROC AUC score, which will help us to measure how well the model is distinguishing between the fraud cases and the legitimate cases. So the classification report and the ROC score shows that our model is classifying efficiently. Now let me show you the important features for the training of our model. So we will plot a graph which will show the top 10 features important for our model for the prediction. So these are the top 10 features importance in the training of our model which enable the model to classify the fraudulent and the legitimate transactions. Now we will first calculate the FPR which is the false positive rate and the TPR true positive rate of our classification model. Then we will calculate the ROC AUC value of our model. Now let me show you the ROC curve of this model which is a graphical representation of an any classification model which shows its performance across the different threshold values. A good model will have a curve that leans toward the top left corner which is the higher TPR and the low FPR. TPR is a true positive rate and FPR is the false positive rate. An ROC curve closer to the 0 or 1 is a better model whereas closer to the diagonals are the poor models. You can see the ROC curve of our model and the ROC curve with an AOC of equal to 0 0.9 shows that our model is classifying the legitimate and the fraud transaction efficiently. Now let's save our model with the help of the joblib.dump. We will be saving the encoder for the label encoding of the categorical features. As you can see that our model is saved now. So let's start building a front end for our project. So we will be creating a streamlit interface for our project. So let's create a file app.py. Let's import the necessary libraries for our project. Now we will load our model. So model is equal to joblib.load fraud detection model.jb. And we will also load our encoder. So encoder is equal to joblib.load label encoder.jp. And then we will create a function to handle the distance between the transaction location and the cardholder location. Let's give the title for our interface. So ht.title fraud detection system. Let's create a heading. Enter the transaction details below. And then now we will create the input areas for various features like merchant category and so on. And after getting the input of latitude, longitude, merge latitude, longitude, we will pre-process it through the function we created above, which we will give to the model for prediction. And then we will create a button check for fraud. And then we will create a pandas data frame for all the inputs received from the user. And we will also encode the categorical columns which are the merchant category and the gender with the help of the label encoder we loaded above. We also transform the credit card number received from the user for the predictions. After all the pre-processing on the user's input, we will pass the pandas data frame of input data to the model for the predictions. So after getting the predictions from the model, we will show it on the web interface. If the prediction received is 1, then the transaction is fraudulent and if the prediction received is 0, then the transaction is legitimate.
so this is the complete code for the front end of our project so now let's see if our project is working or not so we will go to the terminal we will type streamlit run app.py now let's see if our project is working or not so let me just quickly fill the values and check whether it's working or not So as you can see that it predicted the legitimate transaction correctly. Now let's see if it's able to predict the fraudulent transaction as well or not. So let me just quickly fill the values for a fraudulent transaction and check whether it's predicting correctly or not. So as you can see that our model is working fine. So now let's deploy our model. So let me just quickly go to my GitHub account. Here we will create a GitHub repository. Let's name it fraud detection system. And click on create repository. Now we will copy this code. Let's activate our environment. So dot v e n v scripts activate. Our, now our environment is active. Let's create a requirement file for our project. So pip freeze requirements.txt. Now let's initialize our github repository so git init and now we will add all the required files so git add app.py requirements.txt fraud detection model.jb label recorded.jb press enter and then we will paste the code and press enter so now here you can see that our files are uploaded let's copy this url so now let's run our project again Now we will deploy our model so deploy deploy now paste that link that we copied of the app.py url over here let's name our app fraud detection system and click on deploy let's wait while it's deploying our project so yes as you can see that our project is deployed now let's check if it's working or not so let me just quickly fill the values so as you can see that our project is working fine so that's it for today's guys. So if you like the project, do like, share and comment and subscribe to Tensor Titan for more exciting machine learning videos.